I think Ashwini Vaishnav deserves a bigger round of applause than that. Thank you. Probably Thank the, you. <laughs> this is a, a, probably one of the busiest ministers in the Modi government. He does a great job. And today, Ashwini ji is one year since the AI mission was launched. Yeah, it, exactly. 6th March 2024, the government launched the AI mission. And today, circumstantially, it is one year. So there's some big announcement that you're going to do today, I'm told. A little later, you want to talk well, about where we stand. Yeah, yeah. Well, we are uh, launching the common compute facility today. Uh, 14,000 GPUs. Wow. In simple language, can you explain what that, what that will do for us? Uh, the biggest supercomputer we have is about 700 GPUs. And this is 14,000 GPUs. Just compute how big this compute facility is, right? Now, there's this global war between America and China on AI. And the Americans thought they won it. And then the Chinese announced deep seek. Right. Uh, where will we stand? Listen, uh, we are very well placed to win in this AI race. This is the new industrial revolution. AI has brought in such capabilities which are going to fundamentally change our society, fundamentally change our economy. So we in our country who have a very strong software strength yes. and now building up the hardware strength, we are so well placed that we can really take leadership in this field. And that is why our Prime Minister, who has given us the thought that we must democratize technology, we have taken that as the path where, to begin with, we are creating a common compute facility. Second, we are developing our own foundational models. Right. Third, we are developing a series of applications which can be used to solve population scale problems. Fourth, we are creating a very good talent pipeline. We are already... Uh, ranked number one by Stanford University. Number one in the world. We are ranked on AI one. talent. On AI talent already. Fantastic. And we want to strengthen that, continue that. And we want to have a series of data sets of non-personal data, which can then be used to train models without bias. On using mm -hmm. our diversity, our Indic languages, so that we get something that we really need. And that can, that will become the big, big, big force which will help our industry, our researchers, our startups to develop solutions for our needs. Uh, will we be dependent on the American companies? You know, there's Google, there's Meta, they're pouring in billions, tens of billions into this, dozens of billions. Uh, will that be an impediment? And this thought came and we just spoke to someone who says, we are concerned, Mr. Minister, that they should not own the highways on which no, we that will, will not. That, that will not they happen. They should not own the roads of, the, of this industry. That will not happen because, I'll tell you, the world of AI has just begun. This is as, uh, it can be said that this is probably just the second over in the first innings of uh, AI development, right? Okay. This is where the beginning has just happened. So, this is the time when, see, the innovation and the cost will depend upon two major factors. First, what are the mathematical algorithms that we are going to use? Second, how efficiently we engineer the model so that it uses the resources in the most efficient way and brings the best possible uh, solution from within the resources that you are deploying, right? These are the two factors which will happen. And where else do we think, do you think that talent, that capability resides? We sent a, a mission to the moon yep. at fraction of the cost yep. of the Western world. Yep. I think our foundational model and our AI journey is going to have exactly the same oh, that's result, I can say that. That's superb. At a fraction of the cost, more ingenuity. So what you're basically saying is that you're watching and letting them spend the hundreds of billions of dollars while we know we play cricket, we're letting them lose their wickets in the first two overs. So we <laughs> I wouldn't like to put it that way. The way I would like to put it, put it is that in this brave new world where technology is rapidly changing, we must take the lead and our talent, our policy, our leadership of Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji 
where he continuously invests in, in technology, he continuously guides us, these are the strengths we should put to good use and be a part of, I can say, in next five years, in practically semiconductor technology, in AI technology, in telecom technology, we will be among the top countries in the world. I can say that with good confidence. When are we placed on semiconductors? Can you give us the big headline on semiconductors? Um, we are very well placed in semiconductors. Uh, 2022 is when we started the semiconductor mission. And today, five units are getting constructed. And 2025, this year, we will be rolling out the first Made in India chip. The first this Made in India chip? Absolutely. And one major initiative we are taking now is we are moving towards being a product nation, which means we have uh, shortlisted about 25 chipsets. These 25 chipsets vary from very small value, high volume products to high value, low volume products. In this entire range, we have selected and we are starting the development of these products which basically means that we will be owning our IP, we'll have our products, we have the design capability, we are getting the equipment manufacturers, and we are setting up the fab. In a sense, the complete semiconductor ecosystem will be in India in the coming five so years. The, so what I'm, what I'm learning here, and Mr. Minister, can you explain this in simple language? The technology world will not be run only by the American tech bros. There will be no monopoly of deep technology. Monopolies will not work because, you know, we don't want this feeling that they got it first and hence they will own it for the eternal future. We want, we want to have a level playing field in the world on digital technology, AI, semiconductors, especially AI. Are we going to get it? Absolutely. The way the world is panning out today, about four or five countries or let's say five countries, they will have a big say in technology in the coming five years. And we will be among the top five. We'll be among the top? Top five. Top, we will be among the, that's a big headline, we will be among the top five in the world in artificial intelligence, deep tech, and that is very reassuring. Now for all the young people watching this today, how will this impact their lives, Mr. Vaishnav? Whenever we've spoken, you've spoken about what drives you. You're a very busy man, you handle three ministries. There's something which drives you today. What do you see into the future for someone who's 20 year old today? Someone who is 20 year old should feel very happy that you are in the right uh, time when you are growing up, when you are contributing to the economy. Because when you grow up, when you are in decision making positions, you will see a country which is Viksit Bharat, which is a developed country, which is standing on its own feet wow. for all the major technologies. You know, I traveled uh, to Gujarat recently and there was this, I had to get to one meeting from Ahmedabad to Baroda very quickly, very quickly. So I had booked a car and a cab, we yeah, a whole business team, and then it was getting very late. So someone says, what's the time? Is In 10 minutes, we can get the Vande Bharat to Baroda. I reached in 43 minutes Ahmedabad to Baroda. <laughs> it's brilliant. So... I feel so proud, so proud. Tell me, what is the big headline on railways? I feel, can I say something to you personally? I feel, and I'll go a little personal and direct with you, don't mind, Mr. Wynn. Don't be so cautious, I'm okay, I won't bite. What I just want to say to you is that I feel for this man whenever there is a moment which challenges him. I don't praise people well. He's worked so hard on railways, and yet, there are events which happen which are beyond our control, conceivable control. And sometimes the media plays only the negative and criticizes and we're cynics and then we blame. One day I saw a picture of him sitting on the tracks after the accident in Orissa. His head was down, but the man did not move for 12 hours. He sat there, he walked down the tracks, he did not leave till all the repair work had been done. And I think that day, many people saw that picture and he said, we see good intent in this man. He's trying to do a good job. And I know that you will succeed. Thank you. Thank I know you. you will succeed. Thank you. Now, what is the headline in railways? What should we look forward to? Give me a futuristic idea. When is the future of railways coming completely? Thank you, Arnab. Um, in next five years, how we are going to see a new, totally new transformed railways? Five major things. First, 
safety has really, really been the focus in the last 10 years and the results are visible today. What used to be more than 170 accidents in a year is now less than 40 accidents in a year. That is the change which has happened. And it is going to get even better in the coming years. So safety is going to be a paramount thing. Second, totally new generation of new railway uh, technologies we'll see. We'll see large scale movement of Vande Bharat trains, Vande, Vande sleeper trains, Amrit Bharat trains, Namo Bharat trains. These trains you'll see in large numbers in the coming years. Manufacturing has picked up very well and every version we are improving. Third, on green you'll find that railways, our railways, Indian railways, probably will become the first railway in the entire, among the larger railways, I don't talk about 3,000, 5,000 kilometer railways, but among the larger railways which are more than 50,000 kilometers, will become the greenest railway. And just incidentally, our uh, hydrogen train should be launched in May this year. Wow. Our first hydrogen train. And hydrogen train! Wow! And this is the most powerful hydrogen train in the entire world, 1,200 horsepowers, whereas most of the other trains being developed in the world are like 600 horsepowers or 800 horsepowers. So this is going to be really, really a big thing. And that demonstrates how deeply we care about technology and how much talent we have that we can develop such complex technologies in our country. We'll also see bullet train corridors coming up in many parts of the country. Our BJP manifesto had uh, specifically mentioned that after the good success on the western side, we'll have one in north, one in east, one in south. So this will become a totally new way of traveling. We'll also see totally new generation of locomotives. I recently visited Lahod, Gujarat, where a new 9,000 horsepower locomotive is being developed. And believe you me, it is like a data center. It, is not, it doesn't look like an engine, doesn't look like a railway engine at all. When you move inside, you, you feel as if you are walking through a computer center or a data center. It's that... The engine. <laughs> yeah, the engine. The engine. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's, it's so advanced and very soon we'll start exporting such engines out to the world. And I think India will become a major railway equipment manufacturer and exporter in the coming years. The way we have become uh, in uh, electronics, in telecom, in uh, defense equipment, so many other things. Same thing will happen in railways also. So the most sophisticated railway engines in the world will be exported from India? Absolutely. And this, I'm visualizing, how many people need to operate this Star Trek type Railway locomotive engine, how many people are needed? Is it army? Well, or? it's basically loco pilot and uh, uh, the co pilot, that's all. We'll take a trip on that trip. <laughs> we will. You let me into the co I think I think about uh, some 30 days' work is uh, to be done, and then we'll request Honorable Prime Minister to inaugurate it. Yeah. It's going to be a great thing. A last question to you. I know you have to go. Big day for you, big announcement happening at 4 o'clock. I promised I'll let you go. Now, last time there was a story you said about how the Prime Minister works and that went viral. I told you about it. I, I asked the Minister in one of my previous events, how do you people work? How is it being in the Modi cabinet? What happens? And then he told me about a presentation he makes. And then he said, can I say that? He said he made a presentation to the Prime Minister and they all prepared and they all prepared, all prepared. The bureaucrats prepared, the Minister himself prepared. And the presentation, he said, went on for more than an hour. I said, so what did the Prime Minister say? He said, Prime Minister said, nothing, nothing. And then he said, we all walked out. And he said, late at night, the Prime Minister called me. <laughs> late at night. And he said, you can say the rest. What did the Prime Minister say to you? You can say, say that. I think. He said that something to the effect you are thinking for the next 10 years. Yeah, yeah. he basically, our Prime Minister said that your designs are, that was about stations. He said that the designs are good for today. But I want you to design for 50 years. That's amazing. 50 years from now. 50 years from now. So tell me now in third government, third, third Modi government, it's what is the mood in the government and how does it compare to previous times? It's three times, three times more effort to be put in. Teen guna jada mehnat karni hai. We are proud of you, sir. Thank you. I, I was so happy. See, he came here. He has such a big artificial intelligence announcement. But he is a man of commitment. We delayed him. We're grateful for him. We wish him luck. One year of AI. 
and every headline will be first on the Republic Media Network. Thank you, sir. One of the most hardworking ministers in this government, Ashwini Vaishnav. I really love this. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. One minute. One minute. One minute. Before we let you go, sir, we have a couple.